Welcome back to day five, reviewing the men's 2020 Australian Open. They were on number two and defending champion Novak Djokovic was back in action this morning and he defeated the Japanese pair Nishioka in straight sets. For me, it was Djokovic's best performance of the week so far by some way. I thought he was very clinical, I thought he timed the ball particularly well and I think he's adjusting well to the court as the week progresses. His return game, his forehand and backhand were all very solid this morning but I think the most important and impressive component of Djokovic's game this week so far has been his serve. He's recognised that himself in the press conferences. This morning he hit 16 aces, won 93% of his first serve points and also hit 40 winners, so the stats back them um, opinions up. And many people thought that Djokovic looked slightly fatigued uh, from his exploit at the ATP Cup early this month, but I think this morning's performance has quashed any rumours of that. As I say, he was very clinical. His all-round game looked fantastic, and to me, looks ready to mount a huge uh, defence of his title in Melbourne. As we know, as the tournament progresses, that Djokovic does uh, up, the, up the gears, really goes through um, spells of form that other people just can't live with. He's the best hardcore player in the world. Uh, the stats and form prove that, and if he can get to the semi-final stages uh, without any major blips then I find it very difficult to see anyone stopping him uh, picking up another title in Melbourne. He moves on to round four to face Diego Schwartzman. Uh, it would be a tough match for Djokovic, but I expect him to come through that again uh, without much mishap. Uh, so yeah, that's it for Djokovic. Moving on to Milos Reinic against Sofia Tsitsipas. Looking at this match, I made Tsitsipas a huge favourite, uh, just off really going on the form in 2019. City Pass obviously made a huge run at this tournament back last year, also beating Roger Federer on the way. Uh, he picked up a number of titles in 2019 before winning the ATP World Tour Finals in November. So it was a great year for City Pass, a real breakthrough year, and I expect him to start 2020 with a bang um, and make a big run at this Australian Open. He's obviously got a lot of support in Melbourne, um, very charismatic, very entertaining to watch, and Many fans remember that win over Federer last year, so he came in this tournament in form um, with the backing of a big Melbourne crowd. As for Merz Reinich, he struggled with injuries last year. Uh, his season never really got going, so he came into this season, uh, didn't really know what to expect, but he is always dangerous. He's got that huge uh, weapon of his serve and forehand, and if I can get into full flow, then he's capable of beating anybody in his day, which he did show this morning. He beat Stefano Tsitsipas in three sets, which for me was a major shock. Uh, looking at both players, I was very impressed by Reinich. Um, he came out on the court with a clear game plan to keep the point short, to be aggressive and just to hit the lines. Uh, simple but effective, and he, he um, initiated his game plan very well. He served particularly well, uh, he attacked the net a lot, he was very aggressive, and he never really allowed Tsitsipas into the match. He closed the match out well, Ryan, he looked fit, uh, he looked mentally very strong and he moves on to round four uh, to face another big server, Marin Cilic. As for Stefano Tsitsipas, you do have to say he is still relatively inexperienced uh, at this Grand Slam level. Uh, but I was a slightly disappointed with Tsitsipas' performance this morning. I thought um, just his all-round game would get him through this match, but he seemed a, bit, a little bit too passive for my liking. Uh, he sort of let Reinich dictate the rallies. He let him. He, he was bullied from the back of the court, um, and he never really. Yeah, he, uh, he didn't really problem solve this morning. Uh, he didn't have any variation to his game, and he didn't try and neutralize uh, Reinich's strength throughout. He had time on his side after losing the first set. He had time to um, turn the match around, uh, but he never really got it in the match. Really, he never seemed to time the ball particularly well. He never went in a really uh, long run of winning points. And Reinich just sort of bullied him throughout. Uh, Tsitsipas didn't really seem to know how to stop him. Uh, his defence was uh, okay at, at, at times, uh, but overall the right, the match looked like it was on Reinich's racket throughout. Uh, as, right, as long as Reinich served well, uh, kept attacking the net with with authority, then it was always looking like uh, Reinich was going to progress through that one, and he did. Uh, moving on to Reinich's next round opponent, Marin Cilic, he secured a five sets marathon win over Roberto Bautista Gut. Um, again, I got this one wrong. Uh, on form, I think he had to make Bautista Gut a huge favourite. He had a very solid 2019, whereas Marin Cilic, uh, similar to Reinich, struggled with injuries. 
uh, didn't really make a big run at any any major last year, uh, Chilich. But he does come to a tournament to always uh, summit to Ryanich again. He's got that huge weapon of his serve, um, huge forehand, and he has got experience of winning the Grand Slam. He obviously won the US Open a few years back uh, on hard court. So Chilich, he'll always have confidence in himself following that win. Um, he knows if he produces his A game, uh, his, his forehand's really, really strong. And if he serves well, then he's capable of beating anyone in the world on his day. From the match, um, a bit about Tista Gut, it was a difficult night for him. Um, he's obviously a player that relies a lot on his defence. He's very quick around the court, got great stamina, uh, good variations. He's a good problem solver. He works opponents out well. He, he neutralises their games um, rather than being a bully of his own. Uh, he does struggle a bit about Tista uh, Gut. He's not the biggest guy. He hasn't got the best serve. So he does have to ha- work a lot harder to win points than some other players. And Bautista got he, he hasn't got that big game where he can bully opponents and rattle off a few games quick. He has to really work for every game that he wins. Whereas Chilich can just bulldoze a, a three or four big serves and follow them in with big forehands, big solid net playing and sort of cruise to hold and serve, whereas that was difficult for Bautista got all night. He served all he'd been under pressure. And fairness to Chilich he did return very well. And he looked to hit the ball deep and hit the ball wide. Keep Bautista got in the run. Uh, and yeah, Chilich just finished his points off very well. Uh, hit a lot of clean winners. Um, yeah, and Chilich, as I say, he had a poor 2019. Uh, not, no fault of his own, really. He did struggle with injuries at times. But he probably came in this tournament um, obviously hoping to win it. But uh, in, his, in terms of confidence, he didn't play a lot last year. But to beat Ben Marper, I thought the win over Ben Marper was fantastic as well the other day. Um, obviously very windy out in court in Melbourne. Uh, the courts are playing slow, so it's not suiting Chilich's game style. Uh, I thought Ben Marper would get a win over him under them conditions, but again, Chilich came through in five sets. I think the fact that he's winning five sets will give him a huge boost in confidence. Shows he's got that winner mentality. Uh, he's got trust in his game, and he's got that ability to get over the line. He's claimed two massive wins, really. Church is sort of going under the radar. He just keeps progressing. Uh, and he'd be confident he can beat Reinich uh, in the fourth round and progress to the quarter final. And lastly, what a match this was. Roger Federer uh, avoided a huge scare against Australian John Millman. Obviously, Millman did beat Roger uh, in 2018 at the US Open, and I think that did play on Roger's mind uh, leading into the match. In the opening set, Roger looked very nervy. He didn't time the ball at all well. His forehand was wayward. Uh, he didn't serve well. He made a number of double faults. And he gifted the first set to Millman um, with a love break to give Millman a 6-4 uh, first set. In the second and third, Roger did bounce back. He wasn't at his absolute vintage best, uh, but he didn't have to be. He timed the ball better. He's more aggressive with his backhand. He serves more first serves. And he did start to take control of the match. And when he won the third set, Roger... I did think the match was over. I thought uh, Milman would run out of steam. I thought Roger would take control and just hit the ball clean as the match progressed. Uh, however, that wasn't really the case. It was a close four set. And Milman broke them late on and served it out uh, to force a decider. The fifth set was just one of the best sets you'll uh, see all season, probably. Uh, Milman did actually get an early break over Roger before Roger hit back. Um Towards the end of the fifth set, either player could have won. It was just topsy turvy. Um, could have really went either way. A complete 50 50. And I think the match deciding tiebreak was fair to decide a winner. It was midway through the deciding match tiebreak when John Millman produced three of the most extraordinary points that you'll, you'll see all season um, to actually take a 8 4 lead. Yeah, he was 8 4 up um, in the deciding match tiebreak. Looked on the absolute brink of winning. Uh, I thought Roger was down and out, but you can never count him out, can you? Uh, he came back from 8 4 to win 10 8. He railed off six points. Um, some Millman errors, but some outstanding tennis from Roger. And you've got to give him credit. He's, he's played for hours and hours. Uh, he's obviously a massive favourite going in the match. He's under huge pressure every time he steps out on court. And at 38 year old, he keeps doing it. He keeps rolling back the years. And, claiming these memorable wins and progressing through the tournament obviously not the perfect night for Roger um, 
his forehand was a huge concern, I think. And uh, never really got going all night. He didn't serve particularly brilliantly. Um, I'm not sure whether the courts aren't suiting him or whether he's got um, just just time with his forehand. His forehand hasn't been the best over the last few years. He's very reliant on his serving backhand now. Uh, but on a positive uh, note for Rodri, through that's all that matters. He's hats in the hats in the ring for the next round. And while he's in the tournament, he'll fancy himself to go on and win it. Uh, if he is going to beat the likes of Nadal, the Federer's and Medved, uh, Djokovic uh, and Medvedev's later on in the tournament, then his level will have to improve. Um, he wasn't fantastic today, Roger, but he got through it in the end. Sometimes you don't always play your best, uh, but he still got the win, which is the most important thing. And he moves on to round four. So that's it for today's uh, reviews. Tomorrow I'll be back with uh, reviewing the final batch of the men's third round matches. And from tomorrow, I will also be posting previews of the women's last 16 matches and the men's last 16 matches. So we'll be back with three videos tomorrow. Enjoy and thanks for watching.